YouTube just released a brand new feature that helps you get more views by adding multiple thumbnails to every video. This custom algorithm then chooses the best option to get you the most clicks. But whilst we've always focused on click-through rate for thumbnails, it turns out we've been looking at the wrong metric the whole time. Every video on your YouTube channel lives and dies by its packaging. You can have the best script, you can record the best footage, you can do an amazing video edit, but if your thumbnail doesn't grab attention, it won't get any views. But how do you know if your thumbnail is actually any good? Well, that's where A-B testing comes in. This method lets you upload multiple thumbnails at the same time to see which one performs the best. But the fact is that great graphic design doesn't mean that people will click, so testing multiple thumbnails has been part of my upload process for the best part of the last few years. But until now, I've needed third-party software like vidIQ or TubeBuddy to perform those tests, and all of this software costs some extra money. So luckily, all creators across YouTube are now getting access to the test and compare feature for free directly inside the YouTube dashboard. Regardless of your subscriber account, YouTube is currently rolling out the feature to all users in the desktop version of the YouTube studio. You only need to verify your account. To check if you have access already, when you upload a new video, head down to the thumbnail section of the upload info and you'll see test and compare right here. You can also open up any video that you've already uploaded, scroll down to the same section and you'll find the feature in the exact same place. And this is how it works. You can upload up to three different thumbnail options per video, so it's less A-B testing and more A-B-C testing. So let's say I want to run a thumbnail test on my latest video here. I'll add my thumbnail options from my desktop and YouTube will then alternate the images for a set period of time until it decides which one is performing the best. But here's where it gets interesting. For years now, YouTubers like me have assumed that the most important metric for thumbnail success is click-through rate, which is the percentage of people who've seen your thumbnail get recommended and ended up clicking on the video. And on the surface, this seems to make a lot of sense. And this is the exact metric that TubeBuddy and vidIQ use in their A-B testing. But that's not what YouTube is using for test and compare. As you can see, YouTube is now choosing the most effective thumbnail based on something called watch time share. So what does this actually mean? YouTube themselves have said that great thumbnails don't just get viewers to click. They actually help them to understand what the video is about and make an informed decision about what they want to watch. Which is basically a roundabout way of saying don't use clickbait. Misleading clickbait thumbnails often get lots of clicks and therefore a very high click-through rate. But the watch time on that video will often be terrible because the image itself doesn't accurately reflect the content and people stop watching. Which means that overall, click-through rate can actually be quite a misleading metric. Videos with hundreds of thousands of views often have a lower click-through rate, but that's not always a bad thing if it's still getting traction. And a very high CTR number doesn't always tell the whole story either. That number could be based on a very small number of impressions and a very small number number of views. So it's just not as good as it sounds. And in 2024, it's worth bearing in mind that YouTube's main goal is to keep viewers watching videos on the platform for as long as possible. But watch time share doesn't mean average view duration. What it actually shows is the percentage of watch time shared between the thumbnails tested. So they're emphasizing that a great thumbnail image attracts attention in the right way that keeps people watching through the video. And honestly, I think this change makes a lot of sense because as we've just seen, click-through rate numbers can be very very misleading. With the new built-in feature, you can track the results from any thumbnail test in the reach tab of the video. And if there's a clear winner, YouTube will automatically start using that thumbnail. But you can also stop the tests at any time and manually pick your own thumbnail. You can also run as many thumbnail tests as you like. And you can watch the results live as they're being tested as long as there's enough data to show. But there is still a few important things to bear in mind. Not all thumbnail tests are very useful. With every new test that you start, you should have a specific goal for what you want to discover. For example, there's no point testing multiple thumbnails with only very subtle design changes because the results will most likely be very close. Instead, make big changes. If one thumbnail has a cutout of your face in it, then create an alternate option without yourself. The more contrasting images you use, the more interesting the results. It might also be useful to run multiple different tests across the lifespan of the video. Maybe one when you first upload and one a little bit later on. The first week of your video being published is when it will hit your core audience, aka your subscribers or your most loyal viewers. So these people are more likely to click on a thumbnail with a cutout of your face in it because they recognize who you are. But later on, another design could appeal to somebody seeing your content for the first time. So those contrasts are really worth testing. But saying that, not all videos deserve a thumbnail test at all. If your video isn't getting many impressions, then there's probably not much point in running a test because there won't be enough data. Instead, you should find older videos that are still getting lots of impressions because that's going to provide the test with enough data to give you useful results. But then again, if your video is still getting lots of impressions and lots of views, then there's probably no point in changing up the thumbnail because it's working.
writing. It's also worth remembering that this is a thumbnail test and not a title test, and these two things tend to go hand in hand. There's still some much more detailed thumbnail breakdowns that you can get from those third-party apps, but for the vast majority of users, test and compare is more than enough and it's really easy to use. And if you want to quickly generate some alternate thumbnail options for your tests, you should try using some of these insane AI tools that I test in this video right here.